we're going to talk about our first economic model, the production possibilities frontier. The production possibilities frontier tells us, for an economy, how much of different goods and services can be provided. Let's assume that in our economy, we only have three market participants. We've got Larry, Mo, and Curly. And Larry, Mo, and Curly can only do one of two things. They can either mow lawns or they can wash cars. So when we're talking about the production possibilities frontier, what we want to understand is what are the different combinations of output that Larry, Moe, and Curly could produce. So let's make a graph. The first thing we have to decide is what should the axes of our graph be. Well, in this case, they're just going to be mowing lawns and washing cars. So we can draw something that looks like this. On this axis, we can put how many lawns are being mowed. Just call this lawns. And then on the other axis, we can put how many cars are being washed. Let's call this cars. So let's think about the different points on our graph. So point A is going to be the point where all of our market participants are only mowing lawns. So if that's all these people are spending their time doing, how many lawns get mowed? So well, if they're working 10 hours a day, Larry can mow 10 lawns, Mo can also mow 10 lawns, and Curly, well, he's better at it, he can mow 20 lawns. So we get a total of 40 lawns. We can represent that by this point here to say we can get 40 lawns mowed if that's all we're doing, meaning that we are, in fact, washing zero cars. This is going to be point A on our production possibilities frontier. Point B is the point where we're only washing cars. So then we ask, if we're only washing cars, how many cars can we wash? Well, again, one per hour for 10 hours. Get 10, 20, and then 10. So now if we're only washing cars, we can again wash 40 cars. So the point at which we're washing 40 cars and not doing anything else is down here. Now the interesting part is what happens in between these two points, because that represents the trade-off between lawns and cars that we have in our very simple economy. So let's think about point C. If each of these guys is spending half of their time mowing lawns and half the time watching cars, how many of each activity gets done? So here we would get to a point where we would be at, let's see, five lawns, five lawns, ten lawns, for a total of twenty lawns. Similarly, five cars, ten cars, five cars, for a total of twenty cars, which gives us the point twenty twenty on our production possibilities frontier. So now we have point C. Point B was this guy down here. So now we have one more. We said, what about this point D where Larry splits his time 50-50, but Mo only washes cars and Curly only mows lawns? Well, what do we get then? So well, Larry would give us five lawns and five cars. Mo would give us 20 cars. Curly would give us 20 lawns. Well, now this gives us a different point. We get to a point where there are 25 cars being washed and 25 lawns being mowed. interesting, if we move from point C to point D, we're actually able to produce more of each good. So if we were to think about the production possibilities frontier, we're thinking about all those places where resources are being used most efficiently, and we're going to get something that looks like this.
think about some features of this graph and understand what they actually mean. The first thing that we want to think about is the slope at each part of the production possibilities frontier. If you recall, the slope of a line is just the change in vertical distance, or the y variable, over the change in horizontal distance, or the x variable. So if we're looking at the part of the line between points A and D, we say, well, what is the slope here? Well, our y variable went from 40 to 25 for a change of negative 15. And our x variable went from 0 to 25 for a change of 25. left with a slope of negative 0.6. Let's think about what the slope is here. Again, the slope is change in y over change in x. Well, now we have y going from 25 to 0, which is a change of negative 25. And we have x going from 25 to 40 for a change of 15. Now we get a slope of negative 5 over 3, or roughly negative 1.67. It shouldn't surprise you that we're getting a larger number, because we're getting a steeper part of the curve here than we are here. When we're talking about the production possibilities frontier, the slope represents how much of one item we have to give up to get more of the other. In this case, it represents for each additional unit of car washing, how much do we have to give up in terms of lawn mowing? So here, in order to get 25 cars, we had to give up 15 lawns. And here, in order to get another 15 cars, we had to give up 25 lawns. Notice that our graph has a particular shape where it's bowed out away from the origin point. This is pretty typical for our production possibilities frontier because it represents the nature of the trade-offs that economies generally face. Let's think about why the production possibilities frontier generally looks like this and not like this. Let's think about an economy where everybody was mowing lawns. Some people are going to be good at making, mowing lawns, some people not so good at mowing lawns. So it would make sense and it would be relatively efficient for us to move some of those people that aren't so good at mowing lawns to doing something else, in this case, washing cars. To move from point A to point D, we have a reasonably favorable trade-off, and that for each additional car wash, we only have to give up three-fifths of a lawn mowing. But we'll eventually get to a point where we've put all the people that are good at washing cars and bad at mowing lawns on the best task for them. And then the trade-off changes a little bit. When we get to this point here, the trade-off between lawn mowing and car washing doesn't look quite as attractive. Because now, rather than having to give up only 0.6 of a lawn to get another car washed, now we have to give up almost two. The last important thing to think about when talking about the production possibilities frontier is whether any of these points are not efficient places to produce. So if we take a look at our graph, we can see, for example, that it's not really efficient for our economy to be producing at point C, because at point C, they're only washing 20 cars and mowing 20 lawns, when if resources were used in a smarter way, they could actually be producing 25 of each item. And we generally say the more is better, and it's hard to argue that the economy would not be better off with 25 cars washed and 20 lawns mode as opposed to 20 of each.